All right, so our focus now is the energy crisis continues. Some South Africans are considering using alternative sources of energy. Solar seems to be the way to go. However, it's prohibitively expensive. Matthew Cruz from solar energy provider Home Energy advises to start small and gradually build up. And he joins us now to discuss this even further. Matthew, thank you so much for your time. We need this advice this morning, so thank you for making time for us. So does it mean that South Africans need to consider opting, uh, you know, for solar power and completely going off the grid? I mean, what do the options look like on the table right now? Great. Thank you for having me on the show. So the options um, can fortunately be built up in a Lego, Lego uh, like manner. So there's the completely off grid option, which we kind of don't recommend, where you disconnect from ESCOM, you have lots of solar panels to power uh, big batteries that can last for a couple of weeks if the, if the clouds are in your area for a while. That's the most expensive option. Then you've got a kind of middle ground option, then you've got a small option which will just see you through load shedding, which kind of we recommend start there. You can add solar panels later. We don't recommend going off grid completely. You want that lifeline to charge the batteries if you mm. need it from ESCOM. Yeah, and also when we talk about cost, I mean, that is relative. What's, what's expensive to me may not be to my neighbor. So when we talk about costs here, uh, how much are we looking at approximately? Great, so, so uh, fortunately there is funding options in place, so the impact on the monthly budget is not that much. Uh, when you look at the overall cost, there's the, the capital costs of, of the battery option. Uh, that can be around 60,000, 80,000 Rand, depending on which kind of battery and vertigo. A lot of money to put up down up front. When you look at the middle option of kind of taking care of 80% of your energy needs, 70% of energy needs, for a medium-sized household, that can be around 150,000 Rand for the all-in cost, which is a lot of money. Uh, so those two options, interestingly, can both be financed, either through your bond uh, or you can get a rent-to-own model. So if we look at the battery option, it would cost around about 900 Rand a month. And then very interestingly, when you get to the middle option, because of the savings you get of about 1,200 Rand a month, the, the finance, which costs 1,400 Rand a month, means you're only mm. adding 200 Rand a month to your monthly budget to have immunity from load shedding and also generate your own power. So that, that, uh, that financing option is, is you know, I highly recommend that consumers look into that when they're looking in the market for options for their house. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, what about those who may be considering having some sort of a mix of sources for, a house, for their household electricity? Could that also be, be an option? So mix of sources, you know, you typically pair, uh, when, you, when you're talking about mix of sources, we'd, we'd have solar with, with a generator maybe. Right. Uh, we wouldn't recommend wind because it's very, it's very sporadic. Um, so yeah, in terms of the, there's not many sources to choose from, unfortunately. So you've got the generator and you've got the, the battery, it's solar panels. Um, and if you're going for one, you typically don't need the other one. A generator also find is, is very expensive, especially with the price of um, petrol going up, escalating over time. And uh, we don't recommend that option uh, as we see load shedding doubling over the next five years. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you've heard of the saying, better the devil you know. What about those who may be thinking, geez, I mean, I've, I've known ESCOM my whole life. Um, getting into solar yeah. is a bit of a new territory for me. I'm not sure what I'm getting myself into. How would you ease, you know, that individual's mind in terms of just uh, them understanding exactly how solar works? So, yeah, uh, it comes down to education, it comes down to looking around, it comes down to picking a, a reputable company that's trusted. Um, so, you know, I always recommend my company, Home Energy, and uh, it looks, it, it comes down to looking at a, a range of uh, different providers and, and picking the one that's most trusted, the one that gives you the best advice, that can help educate you, that can walk a journey with you, mm -hmm. and is willing to, to go with you on the, on, the, on the discussion and on the conversation of, you know, what is the best solution for me? Can you, can you help me understand my home specific needs? And if they're not willing to, to walk with you a bit of a journey, then, you know, I wouldn't recommend walking with that company. Um, yeah. So, yeah, in, in terms of ESCOM leaving ESCOM behind, I, I do think the time is now, uh, this year, to, to leave ESCOM behind. Yeah, and if, you, if we don't leave ESCOM, I mean, what, what should happen uh, in the next couple of um, months or even years? It seems that's the question to say, will we be stuck with the same problem? Because I think uh, at the back of our mind, there's that little bit of hope to say, maybe tomorrow things will get better. Uh, maybe by tomorrow we'll be told that, you know what, this is a new South Africa, there will no longer be any load shedding. But what's the reality? You're in the energy space. Are ESCOM issues definitely going to be here for the long term? Yes, I'd say with a firm solid, yes, there is. So I think it comes down to the previous messaging being there's load shedding for two weeks, there's load shedding for a week, right. and then not really communicating long term. What's going on is there's the old power stations. This is my, you know, this is my analysis of, of the sector. There's these old power stations coming offline, five of them by 2025. 
So it's Andrina Kamati or not. So the, the, the old power stations are coming offline and not much generation capacity is coming online that can provide power in the peak in the evenings, the 34, 32,000 megawatts that we see in the evenings. There's 90% there's solar farms coming without any batteries. So they're producing power in the middle of the day uh, without having any storage for providing that power at night. And you, when you look across the board, IRP 5, 6, the, the risk mitigation program, there's nothing coming on really that provides power in the evenings. There's like 10% maybe of the power. So mm. you have these five power stations coming offline. You have a fifth of that power coming online to provide power in the evenings. That means load shedding, in my opinion, is going to be doubling over the next five years, unfortunately. So that's, you know, you need to start thinking longer term. When will load shedding actually end? Maybe in 10 years' time. I don't think South Africans have 10 years' time, uh, Matthew. So definitely uh, some of the options that you have given us want to consider uh, as South Africans. And I appreciate you, of course, making time for us this morning. Matthew Cruz uh, from Home Energy, talking about solar energy and how you can gradually, of course, uh, make the move to move to solar. And you don't have to get off completely off the grid. Uh, that can be expensive. There are ways with which uh, you can, of course, get a reputable company, walk the journey with you, and give you some financing options for you to get by.